Hi, everybody, and welcome to Thursdays with Troy again. I'm, as always, Troy Lambert, mystery thriller author, freelance writer. This Thursday, I am here with a good friend of mine, Christine Nielsen, and I'm going to let her introduce herself um, and tell you about what she writes, and then we're going to get right into it, talking about how she uses Plotter. So go ahead, welcome Christine. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, hi, Troy. Thank you. Um, and hi, everybody. I am Christine Nielsen. I also publish under the pen name C.M. Adler, which is a new shift from um, previously having published under my married name. So I'm revamping my entire author empire that way. And I can I can talk about that on another live if you wanted to know um, what that looks like. Uh, anyway, so I publish primarily young adult dark fantasy. I have books that I publish, and I also publish uh, a series on Radish, and I'm a, about to release a second series on Radish. Um, I'm learning that a lot of people aren't that familiar with Radish, so I'm excited to talk a little bit about how I use Plotter for both Radish series, which are written more like a TV series where they come out in episodes. So it's kind of like the difference between a movie and a, and a TV series. For those of you authors who don't know, Radish is a relatively new platform um, that delivers stories in episode format, like the episode yep. length format. Um, and so you get followers, um, you get followers basically from that. Um, and so those people actually, I mean, they follow you, they follow your stories, and so you build up a fan base. And like you say, there's a lot of interaction back and forth. So tell us how you came across Radish and how you got this series onto Radish, and then dive into the plot. Okay. So, um, so yeah, Radish is, I, I hadn't really heard much about it. Um, it actually came to me through Michelle, and then our assistant um, was like, why aren't you on, why aren't you on Radish? I'm like, I don't know. So you have to apply. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing the series that I am on Radish is because that's what I pitched. Um, and that's what they accepted me for was a, a YA urban fantasy where it's a um, Arthurian legend remix where they're cursed and they have to repeat their lives. So it's a, but, you know, it's a bunch of kids at boarding school with magic. Uh, what could go wrong? Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so once you're on Radish, you can publish as many series as you'd like. And so I will be branching out on Radish there. But yeah, the basic concept is it, it's almost gamified. It, so if you, like I said before, if you consider a novel equivalent to a movie and you consider a series or a season on Radish um, equivalent to a series on television, um, I channel, or I channel my inner Disney channel all the time when I'm writing The Outcast of Avalon High. That's kind of the, the idea there. So they want authors to write episodes and have them released kind of on a regular basis. So with The Outcast of Avalon High, I have three episodes a week release. Um, and they, they have different ways that your episodes can time. They basically kind of time out and become free after a certain length of time. Or readers could pay virtual coins to read it before it's unlocked. And sure. you can win coins. You can, I mean, you can win coins by reading more stuff, basically. Or you can go ahead and buy them through, like, your Google Play or whatever. So they basically turned it into, you know, like, people spend coins to level up in Candy Crush or I don't know. Games, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, let's dive right into your into your file here as far as the episode. So how long is each episode, um, for one? Uh, these episodes are roughly 1,200 to 1,700 words. They, so Radish recommended, um, for, this, for this series, I am mostly following Radish's recommendations. You would, you know, assume that, they know what they're doing. Um, so they recommend between 1,000 and 2,000 words. They say about 1,500 is a sweet spot. So I average that. And if it goes over, then I maybe try to cut it into two. You cannot release an episode that's shorter than 700 words, and they really don't like anything over 2,000. 
So they're 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 about the length of a middle grade chapter, if gotcha. that makes sense. Maybe a little shorter than most YA chapters, but it really just depends on your pacing and the way that you write. And I, I'm a lot of for a lot of the episodes, I I need fifteen hundred plus words just simply to create the world so far. Right. Okay. And so this one, obviously you're, this is a typical episode summary. Now, do you use a plot within like a plot line within the episodes? Like do you have an, an intentional arc within the episode or are you more writing to an overall series arc or is it a combination of both? It's a, it's a combination of both. So the goal with an episode is to leave it with a cliffhanger so that they can't wait to read the next one and see what happens. Um, I have three POVs, so it does bounce between three main characters. Um, so usually a cliffhanger for one character doesn't get answered for a few more episodes, um, depending on how involved the next POV character is with that character's situation. So yes, this also follows an overarching um, plot, which I haven't finished plugging in. So it's weird because I go back and forth yeah. between I plug in a little bit, I print it out after I export it, to be honest, and then I work from there. So this is still um, working on hitting. It's it's really probably halfway between the seven point plot and a three act plot as far as the main beats in the overall series that this will hit. And And I have the first. Three, the beats for the first three seasons are figured out. So the episodes kind of have a very organic progression as far as not every detail is plotted out ahead of time, but there is a definite goal as far as like, this is the next major point in, in the plot that we're going to hit. Right. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, and it I get it does make a lot of sense to use plotter for something like this. How many episodes are there per season that you're putting? Um, it, it's for radish. It's very widely varied depending on uh, an author style. I, I'm I'm discovering with what I'm reading on there that a lot lot of authors are still very much in a novel mindset, not so much a, a an episode season mindset. Um. And that's okay. I don't know that that even really matters. People just read what they love to read. But this season for, I'm I'm expecting this season to be 60 episodes or more. So it'll be the equivalent of like a 90,000 word uh, young adult YA novel, like on the on the wow. wordier end of, of YA. Wow, that's actually very good. So you have about 24 in here so far. Um, and I see that you're alternating point of view. So you're, you're using your timeline to show basically which point of view it's in. Um, and then you have summaries in some of them. <laughs> and some of them. I have, I, that's what I'm working on today. Yeah. yeah. Is getting all that plugged back in so I can print it out and have my Bible. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that's very good, actually. And I, I'm, I, it's really interesting to see things in progress as well, because we see that authors are progressing along um, in things like that. Um, and so it, it actually does make a great transition. And obviously you're making something that's a 60 episode season, pretty epically long plotter, but it creates a nice Bible for you. And then I imagine yes. that you could add other seasons within the project as you know, yes. you could go over here and this would be season one and then here's season two, yep. that type of thing. As long as obviously you continue to write this particular series. Yes. Um, I actually, in revamping all of my older books that I published originally under my married name, I'm putting them all into Plotter. Um, I have to just say, okay, so discovery writers kind of make me laugh when they say, I don't do any outlining or whatever. I just write down a bunch of bullet points. And I'm like, okay, that's outlining. So heart you. you regardless, you still have to follow the same process. You still have the pre-writing stage, whether you outline in your head, whether you outline on paper. Um, but plotter is a, is a hands down converter of these discovery writers. And I, I, I think the happy medium, the middle ground is that planter where it's like, okay, I know what beats I need to hit at the story. 
and that's fine. I'll write to those beats, but yeah, just a lot of, a lot of hard writers, because if you don't do your, if you don't want to do an outline to start with before you draft, you're going to be doing it after you draft. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's, it's that's just exactly of, how it goes. Yeah. It's a matter of when you outline, not if you outline. Yes. It's yes, a matter exactly. of when. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just a different thing. Whether you draft, whether you outline in draft two, draft three, draft four, um, that you know, whatever, wherever you outline, at some point you have to try to pull the story together. And I think Plotter is a fantastic tool for that. And I think you're absolutely right. And I really appreciate you sharing your files with us, especially the ones you know related to Radish, because um, I think that's a definitely a new publishing avenue that it's people awesome. are. Yeah, it's it's brand new, but it's it's got some real potential for you know, mm -hmm. people to do down the road. So tell people where they can find you, where they can find your work. I know that you're re rebranding some of your yeah. work and where they can learn about your editing and all that kind of stuff. I'm assuming you have a website and things like that. So I'm to say in the camera view. Uh, yes, I have both. So for, for my writing, my website is um, queensandcrows.com. For yeah. editing, it's nielseneditingco.com. Cool. Awesome. That is absolutely cool. Okay. Final question. So in these series, Thursdays with Troy, I'm trying to get authors to answer the big questions in the world. We're trying to, so um, Victoria, unfortunately for you, Victoria already settled the question of us for us of whether pineapple belongs on pizza or not. So you don't okay. get that question. <laughs> so your opinion in that area, unfortunately, in this particular Ooh. scenario does not count. So, okay. But I am going to ask you um, black licorice versus red licorice. Oh, red, hands down. I don't even know why. Red, black hands licorice down. Exists. Oh, thank goodness. Twi so follow up question on that is Twizzlers versus red vines. Um, that's a tougher one. I mean, that's almost like, do you want like a brindle boxer? Or do you want a fawn boxer? I don't know. Yeah. I prefer Twizzlers. I think it's just the texture. Red vines are a little mushy to me. Um, and I think the Twizzler flavor is just a little crisper. But but if you're so in a that, movie and somebody pulls one or the other out of their purse, you'll take either one. I will say yes. Thank you. Okay. And I, All right. I will, I will Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thanks for joining me on this uh, on this live stream. I appreciate you doing it kind of at the last minute. We kind of yanked you in. Um, and yet somebody in the comments said red licorice. I agree. Um, if you had said black licorice, I was going to ask you what trauma in your life had led in your childhood or your life had led you to your love True of black story. licorice. Uh, so, yes. Anyway, so, so we will leave that one on the table. Um, I don't see any questions in the comments, but if you guys have questions, be sure to tag one of the other of us in the comments. We'll be around the group. We'll be happy to answer them for you, um, as always. And um, again, we'll see you next Thursday for another episode of Thursdays with Troy. Thank you, for Christine, for joining us and for sharing your plotter files with us.